All right, so we're gonna leave this entire thing inside here. <sighs> this is a mess. Oh my God. What is going on miners and welcome back to the Hobbyist Miner channel. Well, running full-size ASIC miners from home definitely presents its challenges. First off is electric. Second is heat. And finally, third is noise. Now I've been able to solve two out of three of them with the fog hashing immersion system. It takes care of the heat issue and it takes care of the noise issue because you're actually submerging full-size ASICs into a bath of dielectric fluid. It keeps them cold, uh, nice and cool and quiet and it works out really, really well. And I've been running this for about a year now with the fog hashing C2 immersion system and it's been running absolutely amazing to the point where I haven't actually had to touch the ASICs in well over eight months. I have never pulled the ASICs out of those immersion tanks at all since I originally put them in until today. And it's going to be quite interesting. Let me show you guys exactly what's going on and hopefully together we can find a way to fix it. Sorry to interrupt today's video, but wanted to give a huge shout out to today's video sponsor, ASICprices.com. Just recently, I was in the market for my next Caspa miner, the Ice River KS3M. And so my first stop was ASICprices.com. ASICprices.com has everything I need in one place when it comes time for my next ASIC purchase. First off, accurate daily profitability metrics. Second, historical ASIC hardware prices. Third, ASIC hardware device specifications. And finally, my favorite, a list of resellers and their pricing in one location. I love it. No more spending hours hunting for the best price. Go over and check out ASICprices.com today via the link in the video description down below. So I've been playing around with Brains OS over the last few weeks, and I really, really love it. It's something that I plan to use in my ASIC shed that I'm currently working on actually right now at the time of releasing this video. And I am loving Brains OS to the point where I wish it was compatible on like all ASIC make and models, not just Bitcoin miners. If you guys know something I don't, are they releasing this for K7s or for other models and stuff out there, L9, L7s? Please let me know because I would love to run this just across the board. So I've been playing around with Brains OS. It's been super helpful and great to fine tune things, especially with an immersion setup, because with immersion, you can push your ASICs farther. And that has allowed me to do that with my ASICs to make them well, more relevant. Um, so taking a look here, they have this product called the Brains Toolbox. And by the way, this video is not sponsored by Brains in any way. And the Brains Toolbox allows you to scan your network find ASICs, and then deploy Brains OS directly to those ASICs via a quick little click, few clicks of a button. It's honestly insane how convenient this is versus back just over a year ago, I remember taking SD cards and inserting them into ASICs and then having to like flash them and all these things. This literally you're up and running in like five minutes, which is awesome. So I've installed the Brains toolbox on my PC. It's scanned the network and it's found two ASICs. One, an S19J Pro and a second one, an S19XP. And our problem child for today is the S19XP. All right, so here is my S19J Pro and it has Brains OS on it. And it, we're running right now around 90 to 91 terahash. And you can see there on the bottom right hand side, we're actually at around 2600 watts. And this is part of the, some of the things that I love about Brains is I can come in here in a matter of five minutes, I can go over to configure and I can go to performance and right here, a power target. And I can just type in 2,600 Watts and Brains does all the tuning to get me there, which this will be super important when I'm focusing on my ASIC shed to balance out because my goal over there is to do two ASICs per 30 amp 240 volt. So I gotta make sure I fine tune the Watt usage very, very closely. So the nice thing is about this unit is if I go over to cooling, there's actually a checkbox for immersion. So that makes this a lot easier. Now I do have fan spoofers in there as well. Just in case one thing fails, we do have that in place just to be safe. I did that when I put these in over eight months ago. So as I said, this is a hundred terahash model and we're running at about 90 to 92 terahash at 2600 Watts, which is really, really good, especially when this is a hundred terahash model. So for eight, we're sacrificing eight terahash 
for a 400 watt difference, which is actually pretty dang good. Now, here's where the problem comes in and we're gonna be diving into this. Here is my S19 XP, my problem child. I've had issues with this model. You know, day one, we powered it up and ran for 10 minutes and I had to ship it back to Bitmain and they actually shipped me a new one that took forever. This model here now has worked great for about eight months until today. And let me show you what's going on. So you can see we have quite a curve there. We're actually not mining at all right now. If I go over to my configuration and look at my performance, it's set for 3010, which is what you can expect from the XP. However, where our problem is, is if I go to system and go to log right here, tuner error, disabled hashboard one, no chips detected on the current chain. That's not good. So this is definitely going to be problematic. I've not had any issues with any of my hash boards since I dunked these in immersion. And here we are. So if you'd hit the drop down box, the logs on the brains OS system is so nice. No chips detected. Either chips are too cold to start, which we know aren't the case temporary problem or the hash chain is damaged. So the chips on there, if you have like one in the very beginning, you know, then all of them fail. It's, it's a really bad design to be honest with you. Um, I don't know how there would be better, but I'm no, you know, uh, engineer out there, but just my thoughts on like, you know, quite problematic. So this is telling me that hashboard one is the problem. And so there's three hashboards in here. If I go back to dashboard, you can see we have three total hashboards listed in here. So here's where my brain goes today. And if you guys are still hanging in here, good for you. So I need to pull this unit out of the immersion tank. That sounds simple, right? However, it is filled with oil. I have not pulled these out since there's handles on there. So let's go out to the shed and go over how we're going to do this. And my thought pattern is, is to disable each or pull kind of the ribbon cable. I'm going to take, let, let's step back. Let's go out to the shed. All right. Let's take a walk back to our shed here. There's the immersion dry cooler. If you guys aren't familiar, we'll go take a look at the tank inside, but the hot oil comes out runs through this unit, which is pretty much like a giant, giant mini split, you could say, or a radiator, and then comes through, cools the oil, and then goes back into our shed here. So let's head inside, we'll take a look. Put this stuff down right here. We'll talk about that in a minute. So let's head inside. All right, so I turned quite a few things off in here to quiet things down while we do this today. So here is our immersion tank. Press the little button there, 34C, which is awesome. This is a fog hashing C2 immersion system. And here are ASICs hanging out in a giant pond of dielectric fluid. You can see there's no fans and there's no power supply fans, there's no nothing. The oil gets pumped in from the bottom, the cold oil. It rises to the top and then goes into this guy, which is an overflow tank. So it's not like a waterfall over into this tank and the pump then pumps it right back out to the dry cooler and rinse and repeat. So here's the handles that we talked about. There's one there and one there. So my thought is, is to uh, unplug this, lift it out of here into a plastic tub. So here's our ribbon cables. It said hashboard one, but I don't know if these are labeled. Uh, that says chain zero. So this is chain zero is this one right here. And then this one says chain one over here. So like, I'm not sure if the software sees this as one and then two and three or what. So uh, hmm, what do we do? Uh, I'd like to do one cable at a time to isolate down which hash board it is. I feel like that would be the smart thing to do, right? So, okay, let's do this. 
my goal is to try not to take this out a million times. Like, I'm going to reseat our ribbon cables just to see if that fixes it. Okay, I'm going to do it on this side too, this side too. I'm gonna to leave the cover off, okay? And my thought is, is let's power it up and see what we get. Ah, oh, what a mess. All right, I guess I'm gonna dunk it right back in. Oh, I don't have an easy way to test this without putting it right back in there. Dude, it is so hot right now. I'm sweating like crazy. Whew. All right, let's do it. All right, so that was a lot of fun. Got everything back in, hooked up. Unfortunately, it is reporting the same thing, disabled hashboard one. So reseeding our ribbon cables did not work. So my next thought is I wanna try one ribbon cable at a time and kind of start from the first hashboard and work my way through. All right, round two, I decided to grab the camera this time. So I unhooked the other ribbon cables here. You can see there's only one plugged in and we're starting out with that first hashboard there. So I wanna see if this is my problem child. I think identifying it first, that's gonna be my first step. And then my second step, if I identify the hashboard first, is to try different slots on the board or try different ribbon cables to isolate down where the problem is. Back in the tank we go. Oh, here was what I was talking about, trying not to fall in. Look at that, look how dirty that is at the bottom. You see the pink stuff? I wonder if that is thermal paste that has like broken down and then just like sunk to the bottom. That is super dirty. I need to talk to some of the people about how to clean this. First time's the charm. All right, it looks like that, that one is actually my problem child. So where my thought is, is let me move uh, the actual port from port one to port two and see if it continues to give me that error. So I realized I moved it into slot three, but that's okay we're still getting the error. So that means and tells me that the slot on the control board, the first one that I put it in, is not the control board because it's having the same issue in another slot. So my next step is I want to uh, swap out the ribbon cable into the same port, you know, one, or, one of these two ports that say it's bad to see if it's the ribbon cable. If I still have issues, then it's actually the hash board. Okay. Here is the ribbon cable that was originally plugged in to this first hash board that seems to be my problem child. I've swapped it from this hash board, which I know is good, and we went into this port here, which we know is good as well. So back in the tank we go. Well, unfortunately, even the ribbon cable swapped, our hash board has no chips detected. So what does that mean? Let's pull this out and it looks like we're gonna have to remove the hash board and send it out for repair. All right, so we need to remove the hash board. <laughs> of course, it's like drizzling out right now. What are the chances? Yeah, look at this here. I don't know if you guys can see that. You see how like there's little chips of, it's actually on this plate. This is thermal paste. Look at that. This is, you know what that pink stuff is at the bottom? This is thermal paste, I think is what this is. Look at that, huh? And it's like mushy, like, uh, so I wonder if like, now I'll have to ask more people on the immersion side of things, if the dielectric fluid eats away or kind of melts off the thermal paste that is on these heat sinks. I wonder if that's the white, like, or like the pink residue we saw at the very bottom. That's kind of, look, there's even some in the bottom of the tank here too. That's kind of concerning. All right, so we're gonna leave this entire thing inside here. <sighs> <laughs> this is a mess. Oh my God. Okay. I'm trying not to get oil everywhere, but I'm having a really hard time. So we need to remove the hash boards. So we actually have to get, it's this one right here. So we actually need to take off the power supply, remove the bus bars and slide things out. Fun, fun, fun.
Nope. Nice. Alright, so here is our hash board, our problematic hash board at least. I'm just doing a spot check to see that I don't see anything burnt. Nope. Now I do see, look, here's that thermal paste I talked about, and maybe this is the problem. I don't know. Look at that coming out the bottom. I don't know that that's the problem. Maybe that's just leftover from some of the effects of mining and immersion, you know. Can't be good for it though, losing the thermal paste, but that heat just dissipates over the oil. All right, there's our problem child. Yay. <laughs> the, uh, the problems of being a home ASIC miner. All right, so what have we learned class? <laughs> So immersion mining, while it's fantastic for enterprise mining or home mining when it comes down to sound and also for heat, it's a mess when you absolutely have to work on it, as you guys probably saw today. Now, hashboards go. It happens 100%. This is my second hashboard total out of all of my ASIC miners that has been problematic that I've had to send out for repair. My last one was the L7 hashboard that I purchased, and now we have the S19 XP. So does that mean your hash board's gonna go that you're gonna have problems? Maybe, it depends really on the number of ASICs you get. You know, As you start to grow in size, I'm about 30 full-size ASICs now, and two out of the 30 have had problems. I can only imagine what these big mining farms deal with. But that's gonna wrap things up for today. I'm gonna go ahead and reach out to BT miners. They're up in upstate New York, and pretty much I have to get them the logs, serial number information, and get it shipped out to them, and hope they can repair it and ship it back. All right, well, that's going to wrap things up for today, guys. Thank you guys very much for joining me. What a mess, but I'll see you guys next time. Sorry to interrupt your video, but I wanted to give a huge shout out to today's video sponsor, BT Miners. If you're in the market for your next ASIC miner, I highly recommend you go over and check out BT Miners. Last bull run, I purchased my Gold Shell KD Lite as well as my KD Max directly from BT Miners. And just a few months ago, I purchased my Bitmain Antminer D9 directly from BT Miner's team. Just recently, I needed my Bitmain Antminer L7 hashboard repaired. And well, BT Miner's made it super easy and super convenient. They have a repair facility in New York, and in less than three weeks, I had my hashboard back up and mining. Go over and check out BT Miner's for mining hardware, repair services, and hosting in the United States. Links to everything directly down below. Now back to our video.